Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, it is 3.15 here. <laughs> it's either 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, let's see why this is so... Well, doesn't make a difference. And I'm sitting here in my daughter's house. The little one's asleep over there somewhere. <laughs> and I thought I'll take the opportunity to make my video today. It has been storming all day. It started early, early this morning, and it has never stopped. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we were sitting outside for a little while together, the little one and I, just watched the storm. She was mesmerized by all the rain and the wind. and the, <laughs> Yes, it was fun. I came across something this morning, and I like to read that, because as I read it, uh, uh, something came to my mind. And if you're hearing any scratching noises, that's Twig, the tortoise that they have here. It's a small tortoise. They don't get very big. And uh, he has a pretty big enclosure, but he scratches at the walls like he wants to get out. And he does get out. We let him out in the yard, and then you have to just watch him. <laughs> he goes all over the place. And, uh, yeah, so he gets to go out and really stretch his legs as well. But in the meantime, if you're hearing anything, that's, that's twig. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I found this morning that someone shared, and I loved it. And as I kept reading, probably because kind of the job that I have right now. Okay, there are some people who have sun inside them. It's hard to explain. Their presence just brightens. It's not just about their beautiful smiles. They have an internal being that sheds light and feels like sun. It's calm energy, inner peace. But most importantly, it's not wanting anything back in return. It's sun. I thought that was absolutely beautiful and so with what I said before, can you imagine who I thought of? Babies. I have been around a lot of babies and, of course, four of my own, then my grandchildren, yes, and they all are like, were like, in some ways they still are, the sun to me. When I think of my children when they were babies and my, the way I felt, the way they felt, it was light. It was absolutely light. When the smiles came, it was, it was like this reward, right, that you're getting. This, this, sh this just light that shines right back at you or at you and I've experienced that again with this little one here she is the sunshine in the house when I read about the parts of it's calm energy it really is oh but babies cry a lot doesn't it? babies always have a reason why they cry yeah? and we're not doing something right Yes, but they do. They have this really calm energy. Why is that? <laughs> what are they? They're babies. What worries do they have, really? Yeah. They're just, there isn't anything there to create negative energy yet. It's all positive energy, all of it. It's all creative energy. If one watches this one's just four and a half months old, yet what she already all does and is interested in and, 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 and the way she's exploring it all. It's this just calm drive that she has, yes? And then this other part, 
inner peace. They do. They shine absolute inner peace. Anyway, that's who I thought of. Babies. Then, of course, of course, that sad thought came along with, why would anyone want to hurt the son in a wife? That light that brightens every room. Have you ever not seen someone in a room when a baby enters, <laughs> with mom or dad or whoever, where someone isn't, or most people, immediately their eyes go to the baby? Why would anyone want to hurt the light, the light, that inner peace and that calm? in our lives. Hmm? It's an odd one. And, hmm, a friend of mine um, yeah, also yeah, I saw, said uh, we need to change our way of thinking about things. We really do. If we talk about peace. If we talk about restoring certain things on earth that yeah, we have kind of been a part of being destructive about it. And then, of course, about ourselves, our mankind. Yes, we need to start with changing, to change our thinking about things. I really do believe that, too. All right, so let's get going. Said what I had to say. <laughs> <coughs> Love that. <coughs> Sheila, thank you. You were the one who posted that. And it's going into my Bible because I love it. We are in the book of Job. Four, confidence in God. Eliphaz of Taman spoke next. He said, that's one of his three friends. If we say something to you, will you bear with us? Who, in any case, could refrain from speaking now? You have schooled many others, given, giving strength to feeble hands. Your words supported any who wavered and strengthened every failing knee. And now your turn has come and you lose patience. At the first touch on yourself, you are overwhelmed. Does not your piety give you confidence and your integrity of life give you hope? Yep, that kind of reminds me of uh, many things that I see that are being quoted, or philosophers have said, or historians have said, all them quotes from all them people out there, right, that are just theory. Job's never gone through what he's going through now. So... And one of his friends kind of said, okay, if I tell you what I'd like to tell you, are, gonna, are you going to you know, be able to handle it? That's why I always say, yeah. when we have something to give and teaching, this or that, and our own life experience, to share that, it shouldn't stay hidden, even if there are failures and mistakes in it. Yeah that then we were willing to restore, still are restoring. I'm still at that stage too. But I'm trying, and I'm trying not to hide things. Yes, some things I feel are, in a sense, private, where, well, why would people need to know about that? That's not something I feel will make any kind of difference out there. Yes, but many other things in my life I share. Yes. To, that go with what I would like, what I'd like to teach, what I would like to give out there from my own heart to mind. Yes. So sounds like to me that Job hadn't experienced any of the things that he was giving to others because he was doing well. Then you have lots to give. When you're not doing well, are you still giving as well? That's the interesting part right here. Uh, 
and your integrity of life give you hope? Can you recall any guiltless that perished? Oh, wait. Can you recall anyone guiltless that perished? Where then have the honest been wiped out? I speak from experience. Those who plow iniqui iniquity and sow disaster, disaster reap just that. Under the breath of God they perish, a blast of his anger, and they are destroyed. The lion's roars, his savage growls, like the fangs of a lion cub, are broken off. Okay, now we're, take, we're bringing God in here again. Okay, it's the book of Job, right? Yes. So, in, in a way, so when I like that first part. I'm going, yeah, that's a good question from, from uh, Eliphaz huh, to Job. That's a good, hey, you've been all of this and that, now it's happening to you, right? So, was this all just in theory that you believed? Or did you actually believe it in reality? Right? But then, what's being pulled into it? The fear of God. Yes? So... Yeah, I disagree with that. God's not like that. Again, this is most of everything that happens to us is of our own making. Right? Yes. So, God is an all-loving God. And if we do not start to just accept that, now, mm -mm. he's right there through thick and thin. He's right there with us. And that's what we need to accept. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's always easier, right, when you know you're not alone, right? Yes, right? You just have to believe, truly believe. Don't be ye of little faith, right? Okay. I don't know about the lion's roar, the savage growl. The lion dies for lack of prey, and the lioness whelps or dispersed. Uh... Well, again, I think we all know that the males and the lions don't really do a whole lot of hunting. Who does that? Okay. Well, again, just saying. <laughs> I guess they didn't know at the time. So, again, this is all just theory stuff, so they don't really know. <laughs> I don't know. Are there lions there? <laughs> I have no idea. I have received a secret revelation. A whisper has come to my ears. <clears throat> okay. By night, when dreams confuse the mind. Oh. And slumber lies heavy on everyone. A shiver of horror ran through me and filled all my bones with fright. A breath slid over my face. The hairs of my body bristled. Someone stood there. I did not know his face, but the form stayed there before my eyes. Silence. Then I heard a voice. Can a mortal seem upright to God? A mortal? That's an interesting word to use here. Would anybody seem pure in the presence of his maker? God cannot rely even on his own servants. Even with his angels he finds fault. Oh! Where does it say that? Ever anywhere. What then of those who live in houses of clay who are founded on dust? You know, that brings me right back. All right, all right. I, I'm sorry. I just have to say this because that comes to my mind now. God cannot rely even on his own servants. Even with his angel, he, angels, he finds fault. Really? You know, I could kind of relay that huh? on, on babies huh? even with babies you can find fault right? what did I say they are literally all just rays of sunshine if they have the possibility to shine if we are letting the feelings that a baby can instill in us huh? that beautiful feeling of sun really truly let us affect that uh, that we, we let that affect that us right 
But of course, we can also find a lot of faults with babies. Oh, they cry a lot. They poop and pee. They need to they constantly have the this and that. I don't know what. Yes? Could. Hmm? Now, truly loving parents who are ready for a child to receive a child into their care. Will they find faults with that child? Hmm? Will they? Or maybe look at their son and go, hmm, we need to change something. I think we're doing something wrong. Yes? What do you think? Just saying. So again, I disagree with this. We have how this is worded. Yes, it's not sorry. Just go that way. What then of those who live in houses of clay, who are founded on dust? They are crushed as easily as a moth. Between morning and evening, they are ground to powder. They vanish forever with no one to bring them back. Their tent peg is snatched from them, and they die devoid of wisdom. I have no idea what that means. I'm not even going to go and try and figure that out. While I was holding... Or let's say it this way, I will not try to figure out what that means because I don't believe that there is no hope for any, anyone. And while I was holding the little one today, feeding her her bottle, she looked straight at me and it was storming outside. It's, cal it's calmed down now. It was storming outside, big time. And her mommy had just been here for lunch and gone back to work. And uh, I looked at her and she looked at me and I held her like this and I fed her the bottle. And I said, let's pray for all the people out there in the storm and at home, that they are safe and sound like you and me and that they make good choices in a storm like that. Let us, let's pray together for all of them. Then she kept looking at me. It was like this just beautiful moment again of unity. Just being able to already give to this little child and it being so attentive, listening to my words. And I also said, and look, you got so much to eat too. So let us pray that every baby has enough to eat out there. Yes. Anyway. I really strongly believe in the power of prayer. And even though there are so many things going on out there that, again, how dare people do stuff like that out there? That's just absolutely hor horrible, horrific. I don't know what. But are they just going to be ground into dust because they're not worth it because of their atrocious behavior, this and that? No, I don't believe that. I believe that's the ones we pray for. I believe prayer wasn't taught to us by Jesus to just feel good ourselves, to just pray for ourselves. I believe Jesus taught us to pray so we learn how to pray for others, especially for others. Anyway, that's all I have to say today. She's still sleeping, 20 minutes. <laughs> now I've got to go and finish sewing my curtains. I have beautiful curtains in my little house, but they're too long. And they are bothering me being too long. Um, because they're messing with my feng shui or feng feng. My daughter says, Mom, you say it wrong every time. I don't care. I know what I mean, and you guys know what I mean. But it's messing with my feng shui. 
and and so I'm shortening them today yes and uh, and I'm going to be very happy about that I've got that after the storm amazingly enough there's a whole bunch of uh, branches laying out here this not, not not big stuff just small stuff came off this huge huge oak tree back here nothing flew around out there I've got pots this and that I've got sensitive plants out there they're perfectly fine nothing they're all good <laughs> so there you go um but I need to start bringing them in and I want to make myself a real nice plant area in my little tiny room <laughs> and uh, it's about time to bring the ones that need to come in for winter time to bring them in and uh, my son-in-law got some oranges and he got a bag that yes I guess he didn't look at it very well they're very good oranges but half of the bag was already going bad so I cut up, so we were using them up really fast, and I cut up one for my daughter's lunch today as well, and they have a ton of seeds in them, which guess what, tells me they're really good oranges. And uh, somehow, I thought, man, you could just throw them away or in a compost pile or whatever, and I'm going, you know what, I, I, I feel like, I feel like this is meant to be, I need to grow an orange tree. I, I've, I've raised citrus trees before, um, and uh, tried to put them in the ground where we live and it didn't work. So they have to stay dwarf trees and they have to be in big containers. They have to be taken in in, this, in the wintertime, go back out in the summertime. They can't just be out there. It's not going to work. So <clears throat> I'm going to try it again <clears throat> with orange trees. <laughs> I'm going to grow orange trees. I'll let you know if it's working out. Anywho, so that's it. That's all I have to share. Yes, yes, yes. It's been a fabulous day with the little one already. I ugh. had a fabulous day with mom home yesterday, and it was so cute. Okay, I have to share that. Dad, so we were home already, and we were in the kitchen. We had the Beatles going. Everybody in my family loves the Beatles, so we had the Beatles going, and uh, we were, we were, uh, cooking in the kitchen, getting things ready you know, for the for the dinner. And dad walks in. Yes. And again, he's like, uh, my daughter was doing something and she was holding her. And he says, oh, can you just hold her for a second? He says, oh, he says, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, let me go wash my hands. So he went and he washed up and then he took her. And, and she was just, she's now getting, she just was hugging him and just, cooing and offing and I don't know what and he was just hey guys look she's so happy I'm home I said yeah that's it's, it was so she's just four and a half months old it was so beautiful to watch and the way he lit up over the love that this little one was just giving him right yes ah that's it. That's gonna, how I'm going to finish up this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he brought us, ladies, some lint. It was dark chocolate. It was very good, too. Lint chocolate home. A little bag of little lint chocolates. Yes. Uh, uh, can't you just feel the love? <laughs> May Heavenly Parent bless and protect you. Embrace you with love. And I will. Talk to you all. God willing, talk tomorrow.